Those who control the present control the past, and those who control the past control the future. Welcome back to the Ex Libris channel, friends. A train crawls across the country from New York City to the west, with children in its carriages, ages 3 and 18, boys and girls, everyone mixed in. It's a long way and they're hot and uncomfortable. But who cares? Are they criminals? No. Are they hostages? No. They are orphans and street children, cheap labor. The train takes them to farms, factories, plants, and mines in the western United States, where they will work 12, 16 hours a day for food, and sometimes, if they are lucky, for a few cents. Many people believe that the U.S. was built on the slave labor of African slaves and prisoners. This is only partially true. In 1850, New York City recorded 30,000 homeless children. Most of these children, whose parents were most often immigrants, were orphans as their parents died of various diseases, alcoholism, or they were forced to live on the streets due to extreme poverty. According to official data, over 250,000 children have been taken from Eastern American cities to the Midwest over the course of 75 years under the Orphan Train Program. Orphan trains were originally created for humanitarian purposes and were never meant to be a child's worst nightmare. Orphaned children often traveled with their younger siblings, whom they were mercilessly separated from. In 1853, a certain Charles Loring Brace, a philanthropist, suddenly decides to found a society to help orphan children. The purpose of the society was to give unfortunate children a new future. Often such children ended up in foster homes, where they were callously used in the most difficult jobs. Casting for these foster families often took place in the street, where children were lined up and had their teeth, hair, and muscles checked, just like African slaves. Children placed to work in factories often became disabled, losing fingers, hands, and feet because they were not trained to operate the heavy and complex machines designed for adults. Working children could not attend school, creating a vicious cycle of poverty from which it was impossible to escape. Children became victims of exploitation, abuse, and even violence. Thus, voiceless, little souls were used to raise the industrial economy and develop the country of the early 20th century. Eventually, in 1929, the stock market crash put an end to the orphan train program. Where did the word slave come from? The Slavs' slaves. Almost every ancient civilization owned slaves and enslaved others. The English word slave comes from the enslavement of Slavic peoples. Only in the past century has the shocking history of slavery been selectively read through the lens of American racial issues and political benefits. Briefly, we can summarize the ancient written history of the Slavs as follows. The slave hunting and enslavement of entire peoples. The Slav was the most valuable of human goods. With increased strength outside his swampy homeland, hardened to all deprivations, hardworking, content with little, good-natured and cheerful, he flooded the slave markets of Europe, Asia, and Africa. It must be remembered that for every slave Slav who reached his destination, there were at least ten who succumbed to inhumane treatment during transportation, suffering from privation and the hot climate. A certain Arab Ibrahim, 10th century, himself in all probability a slave trader, put it this way, and the Slavs cannot go to Lombardy because the heat is deadly to them. Hence their high price, for the delivery of slaves required a decent amount of money. The 9th century Arab geographer Ibn Kardad Beha tells us how the Magyars in the Pontic Steppe dominated all the Slavs living near them. The Magyars raided the Slavs and took their captives along the coast to Kerch, where the Byzantines came to meet them and gave them Greek brocade and other goods in exchange for their captives. James Let's dig a little deeper into history. Robert Davis, professor of history at Ohio State University, in his book Christian Slaves, Muslim Masters, White Slavery in the Mediterranean, Berber Coast and Italy, 1,500 to 1,800 inches reveals the gruesome details of the so-called Berber slave trade. He estimates that between 1 million and 1.25 million European Christians were captured and forced to work in North Africa between the 16th and 18th centuries. In those days, pirates, called corsairs, from Berber coastal cities in North Africa, such as Tunisia and Algeria, raided ships in the Mediterranean and Atlantic, as well as coastal villages, to enslave men, women, and children. 
Everyone who lived along the coasts in places like Italy, France, Spain, and Portugal, and even as far north as England and Iceland, were in danger. Even Americans were not immune. For example, one American slave reported that 130 other American sailors were enslaved by Algerians in the Mediterranean and Atlantic, just between 1785 and 1793. It is not common today to speak of the extent of slavery in North Africa, because the enslavement of the peoples of Europe does not fit into the overall theme of European conquest of the world and colonialism, which is central to studies of the early modern period. Let's rewind the clock back to the future, even deeper into the ages. The concept of slavery has been prevalent in many civilizations for many centuries. Next, we will look at how white slaves were used in the Roman Empire, the Ottoman Empire, and Persia. In the Roman Empire, slavery was common throughout the empire. Slaves were seized in military conflicts and were sold in slave markets in Egypt, Asia, Africa, and Europe. White slaves were often used as farm labor and as servants. In general, the use of slaves was a significant source of income for the Roman Empire. One of the most famous types of white slavery in the Roman Empire was the use of Gaul slaves. The Gauls were located in the northern part of the Roman Empire, in present-day France and Belgium. Gauls were known for their fighting skills and physical strength, so they were used as gladiators, servants, and farm laborers. In the Ottoman Empire, slavery was widespread from the 15th century and continued until the 19th century. White slaves were brought from Europe and used as laborers in the Ottoman merchant and military fleets. They were also used as servants and prostitutes. White slaves were especially popular among wealthy Ottoman nobles who wanted to show their status. One of the most famous types of white slavery in the Ottoman Empire was the use of Janissary slaves. Janissaries were specially trained to serve in military units of the Ottoman Empire and were the chosen fighters. Janissaries were also used as personal servants as they were considered very obedient and malleable. In Persia, slavery was widespread for a long time, including the Sassanid era. In Persia, slavery was widespread for many centuries and in different dynasties, from the Achaemenid to the last Qajar dynasty. White slaves were also brought in from Europe and other parts of the world, and were used in various fields, including agriculture, crafts, construction, and as servants in the homes of the wealthy. In Persia, white slaves were called Sahels and Sagdi. Sahels were slaves from the Greek and Roman colonies, and Sagdi were slaves from other European countries. White slaves were sold in slave markets in Tehran and other major cities. One of the most famous uses of white slaves in Persia was the construction of Tehran's main mosque, the Mosque of the Shah. During the reign of Shah Abbas in the 17th century, white slaves were brought from Europe to participate in the construction of this mosque. The slaves worked on the construction sites until they died of exhaustion or were freed. In Persia, white slaves could also be used as servants and sex slaves. This practice was common among the elite classes of society. The slaves were often highly skilled artisans and could produce luxury goods that were valuable to wealthy buyers. However, it cannot be overlooked that the use of white slaves in Persia was not as widespread as in the Roman Empire or the Ottoman Empire. In Persia, slavery was largely confined to the elite of society and was not as widespread as in other cultures. That's it, friends. What would you like to see next on our channel? Tell us in the comments.